I was uh, asked by some people to review this pen and I saw this pen, I'm fairly certain, at a recent pen meet. Uh, Doug Rathbun had one. Uh, so, <clears throat> I tried it and I thought that's actually quite nice. We're talking about this pen and this pen is a little special. It is a Jinhao, it came from China. Uh, it is the 1919, so 9019. What makes it special is that it has a number 8 nib. And for all intents and purposes, this is the size of a Mont Blanc 149. So it's a larger pen, number 8 nib, that's quite interesting, but also a large capacity converter. So there is a couple of things to talk about. I'm going to cover the parts of this pen, I'll do a writing sample, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and just to be clear, I, I bought this, so it was not sent to me or anything, I bought it. Let's chat about this pen. Okay, the Jinhao 1919. Before we get into the pen, let's just have a look at the box. Uh, back in the day, these Jinhao pens, they would come in uh, just little plastic sleeves typically, but um, this actually came in a pretty decent box. This is embossed with the Jinhao logo. Uh, and then in there, and there was also some information uh, that I can't all read obviously, but that's fine. There was a plastic bar, sorry, a plastic bag. The whole box then came in and that, oh, I'm so sorry. That was probably very loud. I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, here is the actual box, pretty thick. Uh, solid plastic, uh, pretty nice, I, I thought. So we have that, again, pretty solid. There was a little, very stiff sort of Ziploc bag for the, uh, for the actual pen. Uh, and then there was uh, a little, just folding that open, uh, some filling instructions on, on how to use the pen and how to carry it. Uh, so pretty good. Uh, simple, nice, works well. Actually, pretty decent. It's uh, it's it's solid plastic, so I really thought that was quite nice. And now we have the real, actual pen. Now, uh, I'll first show you this pen right next to a Pilot Metropolitan. So it's definitely a larger pen and certainly a larger nib. I'll I'll, I'll get to that. The pen really is the size of a Mont Blanc 149. This is not a 149. This is a Kona Trio, a Kona with a Dana Trio nib. Um, but the, the Kona King Size bulk filler is pretty much one for one a Mont Blanc 149 in size. I don't have a 149 because I don't particularly care for that specific brand, but I do have a Kona. So I can show you that these, these pens are very, very similar in size, right? Okay, uh, the pen, I see them online for different prices. Uh, I just shopped around a bit and waited for a, uh, an auction and I just made, a, on eBay, I just made a bid for $12.50 and I got it and that was including shipping. So $12.50 for this pen, I don't think it's uh, particularly terrible. Let's cover the parts of the pen. So on top of the cap, you just have a clear finial. I do think they come in different finishes, but I just, I really like clear pen. So I went for this. We have the clip that says Jin Hao. It has a ball there. It's a nice clip, not too stiff, not too loose. I think that's very nicely made. Then we have Jin Hao and this, this engraving is very much like the Mont Blanc engraving. It has little lines in it. It says Jin Hao. And then on the uh, other um, side, it says Dao Dao, which I thought was a type of sword, but now maybe I'm missing things up. Uh, um, um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. And then we have number 9019, 9019. Barrel, clear, tapers down, and then in the back, we I don't believe we actually have a hole. So it is theoretically possible, I suppose, to convert this into an eyedropper. I'm not saying I would necessarily, but I suppose theoretically you can. Okay, let's open up the pen. As you can see, again, larger pen does post. Then you have a really nicely sized pen. This one being clear, you can look through the section. You can see that ink in there. Um, 
Nice big feed, definitely reminiscent of a Mont Blanc 149 feed. And the number eight nib, also reminiscent of a Mont Blanc nib. If you've ever seen them, uh, then you know exactly what I'm talking about if you look at the, the way this sort of chrome colored band is put on there. I believe medium and fine are the only grades you can get these nibs in, but I, I could be wrong about that. This is medium. I wanted something as broad as possible. So pretty good. This uh, pen came to me with nib and feed completely misaligned. Like the, I, I've posted a, a picture of it on Instagram, but they were completely, you wouldn't even be able to use it. It was not just shoved up a little bit. They were, you were really looking at something like that for nib and feed. So clearly that would not work, but that was an easy fix. Um, barrel tapers down, quite nice. Section tapers down, has a little bit of a flare out ridge there. Uh, barrel, some ink in there. I don't know exactly how that happened, but there we are. And here we have the large capacity converter, uh, which is just, it has to hit the light the right way, but it is engraved with Jin Hao there. I don't know if you can actually read that. It's, it's a little vague. I've clocked it at a milliliter and a half. So it holds a milliliter and a half of ink. It is a converter. You can take it out. Give me one second here because it actually unscrews, which is quite interesting. Uh, I wouldn't try putting this in other pens necessarily. It's really quite girthy. I don't know if it would fit without some stretching out of your pen, so to speak. Okay, with all this said and done, uh, I think we can we can get started. By the way, there is a rubber O-ring there, or rubber, I don't know if it's rubber, but some sort of O-ring there that keeps the barrel in place, which is nice. This is metal, so when you eyedropper it, be aware this is metal that could interact with your ink and make things a little unpleasant. Once everything is in place though, that O-ring keeps your barrel nicely shut, which I like a lot. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's a decently sized pen. Important to us though is how does it write? And now we get into very interesting territory. My trusty old um, Rodia notebook was finally done. So I'm now using this Ayush uh, paper. I use paper, very, very nice paper, uh, Indian company. Okay, uh, here we go with the Jin Hao 1919. This is a medium nib and the ink is Hiroshi Zuku Kon Peki. And here we see the first problem with the pen. It does not write. It is in fact so dry that you will not be able to make out the writing. So not only did I get a completely misaligned nib and feed, I also got a nib with a slit that is so tight that it simply does not write. Right? These two tines are so tightly against each other, almost no ink passes. Now, this is easily remedied. When I exert some pressure, you can see that the pen more or less writes. It definitely skips. But it can write, it just won't, because the nib slit is too tight. So this will require fixing, because clearly you, you cannot write with a pen like this. This was under absolutely no pressure, that won't work. Fast writing, and I'm doing this with some pressure, with no pressure, you get this. So again, you, you will not be able to read back your writing. Wetness, well, there is none because the pen doesn't write. Um, line variation. This, I think, is quite impressive. Given that it's a 1250 pen, I have no trouble pushing this a little bit. You can absolutely, sorry, that was, I think, misaligned, my fault. You can definitely squeeze out a bit of line variation. Again, this is a cheap pen. I don't mind pushing that a little bit. It is very nice. If it writes. Um, reverse writing. I'll do this with some pressure to give you some idea. It's almost like the reverse writing is better than the regular writing. Anyway, none of this is insurmountable. It's an inexpensive pen. It's not difficult to make the nib a little wetter, but it, it definitely needs that surgery to be able to be used. Right. Okay, let's 
uh, call this a day because obviously this is not going anywhere. Again, I'm doing this with pressure. Let's discuss likes and dislikes, and maybe you can already guess what one of my dislikes is going to be vis-a-vis -vis pens that write versus pens that don't write. Let's look into that. What do I like? And what do I not like about this pen? Well, let's start with likes. Clear pens tend to divide people. I have come to accept that some people really love clear pens and other people don't, and that's okay. So many pens, so many people, so many people, so many pens. So, in other words, that's fine. You, you may or may not like clear pens. I've always liked them. I like being able to see uh, the, the inner workings of a pen. And then there's gold trim, and some people I found respond very strongly to gold trim on clear pens. I don't really mind that either. So I like the looks. I like that it's a larger pen. I like that it is, um, it's, it's a maybe, let's say homage to the, to the 149, but I, I, I think in this case, it's definitely different enough to not say this is a copy of the Mont Blanc 149. I like the larger capacity converter, one and a half milliliters, that's good. That doesn't sound like a lot of ink, but a standard converter is maybe 0.9 milliliter. So it's really quite good. I like that. The number eight nib is very nice. It certainly looks Mont Blanc-esque, as I've shown you uh, in the, the previous part of the video, but uh, I'll make sure there's a, a picture, a close-up picture of the, of the nib on my website. Number eight nibs are nice. There is I have said this many times and I will say this again. I find that the fountain pen community goes through phases. At some point it was flex. Everybody wanted to have flex nibs and then it was um, shimmering inks. Uh, so Sorry, then it was uh, shading inks. Everybody wanted shading inks and then it was shimmering inks. Everybody needed to have shimmering inks and then it was number eight nibs. And every pen needed to have a number eight nib, including tiny pocket sized pens like this where the nib is as big as the pen. Everybody wants a number eight nib. So I think it is clever for Jin Hao to branch out into that, look at the market and then say, okay, number eight nib, let's make that. I like all these things. Things that I don't like. Well, it doesn't write, so it's not a pen. Pens are meant to write with, and unfortunately this pen out of the box did not write. This is a substantial issue. We see this in more expensive pens, but we also see this in these pens. The other issue I don't like is that the quality control was terrible. The nib and feed were completely misaligned when I opened the box. It didn't just come in a little plastic sleeve. This did not happen during shipping. The nib and feed left the factory completely misaligned. That really should not happen. Now, given that we are dealing with a pen that I paid $12.50 for, I don't care. The misalignment was a matter of just twisting things a little bit that was fixed in five seconds. After the review, I'm going to make this nib a little wetter. I want to, of course, keep it the way it was for the review, but now that I'm done with the review, I'm going to make it wetter, and I think I'm going to like it a lot more, because I tend to appreciate one quality in my pens, and that is that they write. So, given that, that this pen did not do that, it was a complete waste of money. Fortunately, that is an easy fix, right? Making a pen wetter is not super difficult, so I'll do that. Again, for $12.50, I don't mind. Bear in mind that if you buy this pen, there is a good chance it won't write. Right? I, I, I had one, didn't write. So if this one didn't write, surely there are more out there that simply won't write. That's okay. You can either make them wetter or you can throw them in the bin. This is a rundown of the options that you have. Everybody is raving about this pen. I'm very happy that others got pens that wrote out of the box, but clearly they don't all do that. And for the record, I don't think that had anything to do with misalignment, misalignment of nib and feed. The gap between the tines is just so tight that it barely has any flow. And that's fine. Again, I'll fix that. It's just be aware. People sing the praises of these pens and make it seem like it's God's gift to mankind. They're not because some of them don't write. I just, I, I, people will comment now and say, oh, you sound very angry. I'm not angry. I'm just saying when you buy a pen, you want it to write. I've also seen this happen with much more expensive pens, in which case I find it a bigger issue because people spend a lot of money on these pens. If I spend under 15 bucks on a pen and it's a little too dry, sure, no problem for me. Just being clear, they're not all great. Having said that, 
I think you get a fun pen, larger pen, number 8 nib, large capacity converter, there is a lot to love. If only it would write. Now, that's it. I hope this was useful. This was the Jinhao 1919. And that's it. I'll gladly see you later. Bye.